And as you can see, when you walked in his office, you felt you should almost bow, you know? And these days, as you probably are aware, record companies vie with each other for the, for the title of, of artist friendly. Well, it's really hard to define what artist friendly is, but it sure as shit isn't that. <laughs> So Paul wanted to start a label that would be much, take the artist's wishes and desires and, and rights much more into account. And this became more real as time went on. First Paul asked me if I would produce some records for such a label if they got it going. Finally he said, look, this is really going to happen. Will you be head of a and for the record label? Which is an old fashioned title that means you're overall responsible for who gets signed, what kind of records they make and so on. And of course I, I jumped at the chance. The record company started, it was called Apple, as you probably remember, it had a logo that looked like this, and so on. Now, a lot of chaos did indeed go on at Apple. If you read some of those Beatle books, they, they talk about all the waste and the, everyone getting stoned and all that stuff, uh, which was also true, but, but we, you forget that we did put out some pretty good records. Paul signed Barry Hopkin, who put out that great record of Those Were The Days, that was a masterpiece of a single. George signed a guy called Jackie Lomax, who was a really great singer and made a terrific album with him with Eric Clapton playing on it and Ringo and everyone. And we signed a band that was one of the only things that the Beatles themselves didn't bring in. This was brought in by Mal Evans, who was the Beatles' road manager. And Mal brought in a tape by this band, The Ivies. And we all listened to it and thought it was really good. And we signed the band. And they made an album uh, that had a minor hit in the UK on it, um, but didn't do terribly well, but didn't do that badly. And when we had a meeting about what to do next and what to record next, for reasons I can't quite remember, there's quite a few things about the 60s I can't quite remember, <laughs> but we decided not just to make another record as one normally would, but to actually change the name of the band and kind of start again. So the Ivies became Bad Thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Same guys, different name. And, and Bad Thing went on to have considerable success, several huge hit records, and they wrote some songs that became enormous hits later on for other people, like Mar Mara Carey and all kinds of people recorded their songs. They've become sort of legendary now. They had a very checkered history, all kinds of tragedy and uh, family hell and suicide and all kinds of ghastly stuff happened to them. But the essence of the band continued. And like a lot of bands from that era and from others, people would leave, people would join. But the, but the band's repertoire and its, its, its very essence would remain intact. And that's what happened to, to Bad Thing. They kept going for a while. And it so happens that one of the members of a later iteration of Bad Thing um, was none other than our own esteemed band leader, Jeffrey Allen Ross. So, card-carrying member of Badfinger in our band, or in fact, in this instance, be our band, <laughs> <laughs> and not ask him to do my favorite Badfinger song. So, so um, at this point, I'm just going to play rhythm guitar and ask Jeff Ross if he would sing my favorite Badfinger song, which I bet you remember. <laughs> 